Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over a week two uh, survivor pool uh, analysis. We're going to talk about what happened week one and then move on. Just for those of you who don't know, this is Michael Brave Jayhawk Jensen. Uh, we did a whole year of this last year, and this uh, we did a preview show, and we did week one. And what we usually do is we talk about what happened uh, the previous week before we get into uh, uh, this coming week. So I guess I'll start. Um, mm -hmm. So for um, just to get, get everybody up to speed and what I did. So we, I have a partner and we did 10 entries each into the circuit contest. And one of the things that was interesting was that um, we decided that for the first five weeks of the season, we were just, weren't, weren't going to consult. We weren't going to talk about it to try to like get us off of group think, get us off of whatever. And then after five weeks, we were going to, going to coincide. I was wondering what, what that was going to look like. And I, I, I found out what that was going to look like because my partner is, is more of a survive now type of guy, even though, you know, he knows what he's doing, but if I had to left to his own devices, he'd be more a survive now type of guy and left to my own devices. I would like punt everything in the first week, you know? So, so, so that's why we usually are pretty good because we kind of like bring each other in. So. Balance each other out. Yeah. Right. So, so this kind of worked out because, because, because I went in my own pools, I didn't play a share of Baltimore across all of my pools, no matter single entry, double entry, triple entry. And and he I didn't either. He for for of the 10 entries, he played six Baltimores on circa, which I never would have would have would have, would have authorized. Okay. Um, but you know, and so those those advanced and then his uh and then his others were two two Minnesotas, two Seattle's, which I certainly would have would have, would have authorized. What I did was I took the with my ten entries. I took the five teams I liked, and I played two entries each. So uh, I had two Washingtons. They advanced. I had two uh, Atlantas. They advanced. And then I went down with two Seattle's, two Minnesotas, and two Denver's. Um, so I so that was my my circle. And I basically did the exact same percentages across all of my pools um between those five teams so essentially 40 percent of my stuff is alive with the exception of i have one pool which is a shitload of money which starts double pool week five and in that pool i did not use atlanta because i need to save atlanta for week five um so in that pool uh i only advanced with just the the washington's um um, so that was, uh, so, excuse me, I, I advanced with just the Washington's. So that, that, that was, that, that was that in the, uh, the nitrogen pool, I just got lucky. I just basically went, I, I, I did like the bigger buy-in and then this, 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 I just went one, two, three, four, five. And I happened to have had Washington in, in the bigger buy-in one. So that was fortunate. That was 36 people that went down to 24 after one day, um, and they gave him a chance to buy back in Buffalo, but only one, but only one guy put bid in for that. Um, so that was fine. And then, but basically, it's went basically forty percent of the entries were live, uh, sixty percent were pretty much dead. Uh, now I, I know pretty much how you did, but why don't you just tell everybody how you did and what uh, what 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 your thought process was in it? Well, it's a very easy um, synopsis of what happened. Uh, a lot of blood in the streets. Um, I did uh, a lucky sixty-six total entries. And I advanced three. Let's three go. 66. Let's go. Uh, all in all in Atlanta. Uh, I did not take Atlanta and something that I, I think I took Denver instead or something. I had uh, I took Chicago and Denver in a pool with twenty seven thousand entries. It has five doubles. Twenty seven thousand. I love it. <laughs> I have zero left in that one. So that that's that <laughs> that one's just completely over. I took. Five teams and they all lost. That's pretty good, right? Yeah, not bad. it's over. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, over five. Did not do a reverse parlay on that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. We we went to Minnesota, to Seattle, and Circa. See you next year. Yeah. In the pool, we've won three times. We went five, four, one, with one being Atlanta. Let's go. And then we all right. And then got we went uh, five, five, two, in our other one with twelve hundred people. Uh, the strategy was simple. I. I have a few people that send me their pick breakdowns. There's, there's one pool in particular I've played in the past. They lock the picks on Saturday for the first week or Friday. And then it's Sunday thereafter. When I start seeing 
what these picks are closing at, it, it was just, it was, oh, it was impossible for me to go any other direction. Yeah. Um, not to say that it's incorrect to do so, but I like to play with a little hopeful thought of the perfect storm going in your direction. And if that happens, 90 something percent of the pool gets knocked out and you're still in. And that simply just can't happen. If you take a team that's 30% pick, not that I wouldn't do that at, at some point, but week one is where I take the most chances uh, the pick breakdown percentages were fantastic, especially for Circa. Washington, 38%. Baltimore, 32%. Uh, we look like geniuses uh, at 11 and 6%, but we're out and they're all in. So well, well this, you bring up an interesting – you bring up a point which is extremely important. As you guys all know, I mean, most of you know, I mean, I do a lot of DFS stuff. And, and, and um, the, the, the concept comes up is how do you measure success? You know, and how do you measure results and things like that? And one of the things that happens in DFS all the time, it's like so you play a guy or people play a guy, they don't do anything. And people say it was a bad play, you know, or, or yeah. people fade a guy, the guy smash and say it was a bad play. And, and of course, I mean, anybody with a brain knows that that fewer results oriented uh, analysis is, is stupid. But the question is, when do you kind of gauge whether something's a good play? And when I say but DFS, it's basically the same thing with, with, with the survivor. You judge a play as soon as the pick percentages and everything is locked is released, okay? And that's what you have to do. You have to figure out, after you make your play, if you have to make your play, after the pool's locked and you say, okay, what is the percentages picked? How does that relate to what I thought they were going to be? And what kind of leverage do I actually have over the field? Whether something actually comes in or not is is... I know it's hard for people to, to think about, but it's it is completely irrelevant, like like, like yeah. to, to 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 results. So like, here's a good example. All right, so so not to talk too much about this other pool. So so I played the against the spread pool, right? And, and oh, so, I love those. I didn't do those. I love those. And we played. I, I played the circle pool, and I'm pretty dead money in that. But I decided that I'm gonna I'm gonna so it's, it's just like any other contest that I don't care how I do against the spread per se. All I care about is how I do relative to everybody else, right? So my entire goal is to just be, try to figure out who people are playing and do the and do something and play the opposite. And I did like a did whole. Did you take Arizona, Eric? So wait a minute. So I did a whole video on that, <laughs> and and I have like these little guidelines for what I have to do. And and unfortunately, the reason why I didn't take Arizona is I have this other thing that I'm doing is I'm not taking anything on that key number because a uh, because a because um, a push is death. You know, so yeah. so that's the only reason I didn't. That's do that. fine. Yeah. Um, and I also that's the reason I didn't take Houston, which I liked as well. They lost, but I liked Houston as well. But again, it was right on the ten. So I ended up going four and one. Um, and the one I lost was Indianapolis getting stuffed on the zero yard line at the end. That would have gotten the backdoor touchdown. But 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 forget that I went four and one. The the actual analysis shows that I really didn't do that well because the the teams that I thought we're going to be like really well high owned or low owned. It didn't work out that way. So I have to think about what I did wrong. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's the way you have to look, look at this kind of thing. Um, so let's um, now again, just as, as we, as we move forward, remember like survivor is, is about winning the whole pool and it's about winning the whole thing. And it doesn't matter whether you're out in week 11 versus week two. Okay. You get paid the same amount, zero or one. Right or what? You get paid zero, and you have to set up your thing to win. And 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 and, and you can't then like if you play you know sixty three entries and you lose sixty of them, uh, you know what I mean? Like you can't just say, oh, I play bad, you know, or I'm pissed. You played what you played, and and the numbers came out exactly even better than you thought they were going to. Oh yeah, yeah. You I, faded, I, I, I'm, you I'm faded very... Washington. You faded Washington. Think they were going to be twenty five percent owned? They were actually thirty five percent owned. Yeah. You know what I mean? So so that's really that's really all you can do. Now all I can ask again is that. Let's let's see how. On the one hand, yes, let's let root for those three entries to survive and keep your interest. Um, and then let's see how much we can do. So we're we're gonna go ahead and um, I'm gonna share my screen here, and I'm gonna be sharing the uh, the survivor grid, and we're gonna go through this week's uh, contend uh, contenders. And I find that this is an extremely important week to distinguish Very. what pool you're in as a function of what you want to play. Okay. And I, fortunately, I'm in a, a, a whole portfolio of pools that have totally different characters that will illustrate that point. Like I have like, I'm in this big single entry, just straight up, straight single entry pool. I'm, I'm in like a kind of a lower, a lower amount of people single entry pool. That's the nitrogen. 
I'm in this double pick starting week five. You have to pick 40 games pretty much. You know what I mean? Uh, pool. And then I'm in the circle pool that has specific restrictions on, on yeah. Christmas and Thanksgiving, which is totally different. So I, I'm actually going to need a lot of your help in this one because, because this, because the single entry pools are the ones that are confusing this week. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the, um, uh, we're going to go through, uh, uh, we list them again by EV as a function of, it doesn't matter. Let's use the average. And we're going to go through these and, and we're going to go through like who we like and whatever it is. So let's first talk about what I want to talk about first are the four highest EV teams listed. And they're also the four highest win percentage teams on the board. Okay, so mm -hmm. talking about Dallas, San Francisco, Philadelphia, and Buffalo. W what are your thoughts on those four teams? If you want, you could separate single pick versus double pitches. What are your thoughts on all four of those? For Circa specifically, every single one of these games, the top five, yeah, outside Buffalo, they play on Thanksgiving or Christmas. So if you have, if you're playing Circa or a, a pool similar, you need to be very careful. Not necessarily don't pick these teams, but you need to look at, okay, if I take this team, what am I looking at for availability? Not just on Thanksgiving, Christmas, but on the full slates on weeks 12 and 16, because those slates in themselves are much smaller because of the removal of those teams for those smaller slates. <clears throat> so the teams um, you're referring to, so da for example, Dallas is, 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 a, is a Thanksgiving day game. Yep. San Francisco is a Christmas day game. Philadelphia. They, are, they, are, they, are, they, are they both? Yeah. And, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, I'm supposed to know that, right? I, um, I, had, I had marked down that they're in both, but then I, I wasn't sure if I was wrong. That could, that could be. Um, uh, Philadelphia, I know, is a Christmas game. Um, yeah. Uh, so all three of those teams are, are, are teams that, you know, in a perfect world, you'd love to have available still. Um, Buffalo is on none of those slates. I got Correct. That. Right. So, they are not. They are not. So you think that for uh, circle? I, yeah. I like it. So, so of those four teams, because that, that's a good group to put them in, those exactly. four, which team do you think that I like the best to use this week for my strategy? Okay, so we talk about for Circa? There's only one. I uh, just in really, Circa or in general, as long as it's not a pool of 20 people in it. Because I, I always think about these pools assuming – that they're going to go the distance or near the distance. I'm playing for the latter week. See, for me, they all look to me on the surface really similar. But what's what's kind of what's kind of like alluring to me is this is is I look ahead at Philly and I see not only Christmas Philly, but I see them in week 17. Um, and and Philly in 17. I, I know people are like, what the hell are you thinking about week 17? I mean, it's freaking it's still hot out. Like, what do you wear week 17? But that's what you got to worry about, man. You got to worry yeah. about week 17. Um, so Philly probably be a team that I would probably want to save. Um, Dallas, uh, and again, I think about this, about, okay, if if am I, do I really want to save them for Thanksgiving if I'm going to end up fading them anyway? You know, and that that is stuff, something you definitely want to think about because if it turns out Dallas is like the, huge, the big, huge favorite on Thanksgiving and everybody's going to play them, Maybe, just maybe, you're not going to want to play him. So that's something I consider. Who do I think you I, – I would have to imagine that you would – see, on the one hand, I would say you probably like Buffalo the best, but you hate picking those teams with the 27% uh, exposure. So I would say that your favorite would probably be San Francisco. It's actually Philadelphia. It is it would be hard. Yeah. It would be, it'd be harder to take them for Circa because of the Christmas slate. But right. okay. I think I would give a slight nod to them, even in Circa. Without the Christmas slate, I, I like I like Philadelphia a lot more. It, they have a very attractive week 16 and 17 combo. I mentioned this last week. When you're looking to save a team, if they have multiple weeks that you can spread them across, it's it makes a lot more sense to save them for the latter part of the season. We can move along to, to Dallas to illustrate a good example. Let's let's pretend you're playing Circa or any random pool. 
Dallas is a really, really good team to save because they have a run. We'll just forget weeks three, four, and eight, which in themselves are really good spots for Dallas. Yep. But they have a four-week run, uh, run week 10 through 13. If you, can, uh, if you can just click on the Dallas row, I like to visualize it this way, just with the red line, and then start at week 10 and see where they are in relation to the other teams. They're second in week 10. Yeah, look at that. They are – they're six in week 11. First in week 12. First in week 12. Second in and week then, 13. And week 13 is interesting. That's that's a – I have a note here for this. Everyone's going to have Pittsburgh in 13. Everybody. Everybody's going to have Denver. Assume most people won't have Kansas City, but it really doesn't matter. If you don't have – Dallas available as an option for 13 even if you use them in 12 you're going as it is right now you're going to have to take Pittsburgh or Denver and you're taking the chalk right. so I just don't like taking Dallas at all because they're going to be sprinkled across so many different weeks that if they are the clear best pick in week 13 which they won't be point spread wise probably but EV wise they will and if you're not going to take Pittsburgh or Denver anyway at the current spreads, taking Dallas will probably be a better option than dropping to, you know, some of these other teams that might only be a three or point, fa- three yeah. or point, fa- point we'll, favorite. We'll, we'll get to those. So, so wait a minute. So you, you want to say Philly, but you like Philly the best here. Um, I, I, Philadelphia is my third fourth or fifth pick this week it, it's oh, hard I, mean, I mean of these four. Oh, these four yeah it's it's, it's 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 certainly my favorite because for philadelphia they're late enough in the season you can hope the more weeks there are the more you can hope that could happen to change the situation the closer the closer you are to something the more likely that event is you know is going to happen the event being what the current spreads are Arizona's probably going to suck regardless, but something else could change right. between now and then that will open up another viable option. But a viable option being a team that everyone also isn't going to have. So taking Atlanta in week 17, you know, doesn't sound that attractive. No, I'm sorry. Man, I mean, actually, they're at Chicago. I'm sorry about the wrong week. Uh, the, the Giants, it's, it's just not an attractive option because everyone's going to have the Giants there. So you can't really fall. I wouldn't, I don't like falling back on a team that everyone's going to have. There's not much, there's not much to look forward to there. Yeah. So moving on. Well, hold on. I'll get there. So let me just, let me just wrap up these, these four teams. Um, So again, I, uh, for me, I mean, I'm a little different. My partner here, I want to just maintain as much flexibility as humanly possible with these Christmas things, you know? Yeah. And sometimes you say, well, you know what? I don't need to have all these guys available. So if anything shows up, whatever, um, I'll take them early. And there's certain, there's a certain degree of wisdom to that, but I just, I just, I just would love to have it. Let's just say that all these teams are available, whatever it is, and they all look pretty good. I just love to have the option to take the lowest on one if I could. You know what I mean? Correct. Um, so, so I want to ham- I, I want to hammer points on. I, I need to hammer a couple points on on Buffalo, San Francisco, really quick before okay. we we move on. Okay, so let me uh, just finish. For- then you could do. Then you could do that. So, um, yeah. so for me, I I think circa of those four, I would just take Buffalo, even though they're going to be chalky, just because of the flexibility to afford those. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying I'm going to take them at all, but. But uh, of those four, I think Buffalo for Circa. And I think I agree with that. I think Philly probably for just straight single entry. The reason I don't like Buffalo, I'm looking at a uh, sort of, uh, for Buffalo, do the red line and then go to week eight, please. So I'm, when I'm looking at a team, I start with that week and then I look far out right. And there's not a lot of current. Now, I don't know how updated this is, but. Right. I know I'm not going to like Buffalo for at Philadelphia, by mm-hmm. at Kansas City, Dallas at Chargers. So they have a very, excuse me, a very large hole in their playability until the end of the season, and that's that's where it gets a little bit dangerous because they're not that great anyway. So you, you really want to use Buffalo before they're at Eagles game. Week eight is a good one to look at 
they were the highest favorite team. And look at the two teams underneath it, Dallas and Baltimore. So if you use Buffalo in week two, it means, well, by removal, you can't use them in eight. Start to look at the other options you're going to have. Dallas, clearly a great option, but, well, you could use them in three. And like I just mentioned, I really like them for that 10 to 13 stretch. So for me personally, I would never use Dallas in this week. So I, I would just cross them out, for, at least for myself. The next one is Baltimore. Baltimore's got week three, there's a lot of options. Week eight certainly is going to be a very high pick percentage on Air, uh, at Arizona. But I really like the thought of having them for 14. Yeah, and you. if I'm not going to use Baltimore, that leaves these other teams. And they're teams that you could be using in the next couple of weeks, like Detroit, or you can use them in the middle part of the season. The Chargers have a couple weeks, I like get week five specifically, and then it, it kind of dries up after that for the time being. So look at who you have remaining if you're going to take. I think it's fine to take. You can definitely get around taking Buffalo, but if you already took Baltimore in week one, I would not take Buffalo this I week. Agree with, I agree with that completely, by the way. Um, um, okay, so – Take it away because these are these are the these are the more these are the fun these are the more fun fun fun. Uh, oh, and, and then uh, and then San Francisco. Sorry, what, San Francisco. What were going to say right? um, uh, week eleven for San Francisco. Oh so, yeah, I want to visualize it too. Okay, so San Francisco <laughs> things change very 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 quickly. Uh, when they change, you audible adjust accordingly. San Francisco, I, I, I actually I did not watch the games on Sunday. I was doing things with the kids. But I assume things look great for them considering how the, the large jumps in the point spreads. That they yeah, they, cru- they, cruised. they cruised. Week four, they're going to get slammed. Week 11, week 15, week 14. Uh, the, lo- lots and lots and lots of spots for San Francisco. Sorting by week 11, this is a, a week that stood out to me. This is a week where there's a bunch of teams underneath them Probably San Francisco. There's a very good chance San Francisco will remain the highest favorite when we get there. Assume, let's assume they are. Detroit's a team that you very well might not have. You can use them in three, five, eight. Uh, Miami has four different options as well, leading up to eleven. Jacksonville, they, their options are even stronger, albeit there's only two of them. And Buffalo, I assume most people would not use Buffalo here if they got there. Actually, the most people will be done with them. And then for Dallas, you're not going to get to 11 and then use Dallas here. You're probably going to save them for 12 or 13. So that really leaves like three teams. It leaves Detroit, Miami, and Jacksonville. If you're not going to have two of these teams by the time you get to 11, I really don't like using San Francisco in week two. Right. So if your mapping uses up, two of Detroit, Miami, Jacksonville, which is why I never would have taken Jacksonville in one. I did look at these things. It, I mean, people took them. They were a 3% picked in Survivor, probably around that in yeah. all pools. It, it, you really pay for it later when it closes up one of your three best options if you weren't to have San Francisco. So I like saving San Francisco for 11 because even if you don't use them, Week 15 is going to be extremely attractive, barring barring some catastrophic injury, which San Francisco played through that last year and won every game. Anyway, their team's so strong. Having San Francisco for 14-15, very lucrative proposition. And whatever you're, you're giving up in terms of EV or points sped by dropping this week, you're very likely going to gain much more than you're, you're losing this week in those latter weeks. So let's talk about the, the meat of this. And, and the, yep. this, this is the, the how much risk do you want to take question. Right? So, so I, I, will, I will do us the honor of, of, toss, of, of eliminating Cincinnati. Okay. Yep. Um, for, you know, obvious reasons. They have their big, huge favorites, like five other times this season. Okay? Yep. But let, talk to me about Detroit, Giants, why not Denver, and New Orleans. I presume we're not playing Kansas City. Correct. Uh, Those are the ones I wrote down. I even wrote in Tampa Bay as well. I, 
you can write them. You can put them. Okay. Throw them in the group. So, so, I, I what, put, so what do you think of all? Because I, I have, I have. Okay, I'll, I'll start. Okay, so I'll start. So, so Detroit. Okay, this is the way I, I think about, about about portfolio management stuff. So Detroit's an interesting bird because Detroit, depending on what pool you're in, it could be viewed as a conservative play, or or a non-conservative play. So like Detroit in a in my double pick whatever pool i almost think it's a little bit too conservative you know what i mean i almost kind of want to save them a little more in those types of oh yeah absolutely and then on the other hand in like the real true single pick pools like you know just like nitrogen or whatever it is not that it's a bad play but i consider a little more of a risky play because i could certainly play one of those top four teams i could certainly play dallas san francisco Philly or Buffalo in a single pick freaking pool, especially with 36 people in it. I can certainly do that. So depending on what pool you're in, it's, it's, it, it, it depends on what, you know, on how it fits in. Now, as far as Circa goes, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good play because it's kind of in the middle of the risk profile. The only thing I worry about for Circa with Detroit is they'll be a little bit more popular than they're being projected. Okay. Um, so I'll leave that. They play, remember, they play on Thanksgiving. So, and they play on Thanksgiving, right? So that's I, I, th- I think they'll be less picked than maybe they will, will be less. But are people really saving Detroit for Thanksgiving? Um, yeah, maybe. It's, maybe. it's not necessarily saving them for that game specifically, but yeah. you know the other weeks that I mentioned, right? It's so, it's, it's so, certainly a team that you'd like to have around. So I'll I'll just do Detroit and Giants, then you can do Detroit and Giants. So one of the others. So yeah. the Giants are just kind of like the. Like they're twelve percent here. I think they're, they're. I mean, they have to be more owned in circle. That's my 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 opinion. Uh, I think the Giants in in double triple pick pool pools. I think even though they might be popular in those, I think you kind of have to eat it there, um, just because of the zero future value in pools like that. Just means just so much. So so they're really really strong there. As far as straight single pick. No, no, no sundries. You know what I mean? Like no pools. I struggle yeah. whether it's 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 too risky. Um, I'm inclined to think it's not too risky, um, but it's definitely it's definitely a consideration. Um, what do you think of Detroit and uh, the Giants? I'll start with the Giants. Uh, the best pick is a team coming off a performance like they had in week one, playing on the road where some people are going to be nervous about that. Ironically, they're playing against the team that everyone wants to fade all year. And somehow the spread increased from last week up to five and a half points when it was at like three, like four and a half last week after scoring zero. It feels (laughs) sick. It is sick. It's the absolute best pick of the week for a standard single inch, uh, single entry pool. I, 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 I really don't, I really don't think it's even close because Detroit has value and the Giants don't. It, it's as simple as yeah. that. The way that I map this out, I really like to have Detroit available for I, – I, I, I only have three entries. I'm not going to go all in on the Giants. I am going to play – we're probably going to play one Detroit and two Giants. You would, it would be very nice to have Detroit for – is it 5, 8, 11, and sure. then you know possibly 12. Now, if you're playing Circa – my brain's gonna, you know, is gonna turn off to that because I won't be talking about yeah, it with my yeah, partner. Yeah, yeah. So my brain's not gonna think of it that way. What we noticed, our strategy going into this year and last year was when that schedule comes out, if Dallas has a really good play early in the year and they play, you know, someone subpar at home on Thanksgiving, which I assume the schedule makers will always put them against one of the lower tier teams because they want them to win. Take Dallas early. The first year we did Circa, Dallas was like 3% picked as a, I don't know, eight or nine point favorite in week three or four. And they were like 20 something percent. And, you, and, you, percent and, you, and you, play, you, you played against them on Thanksgiving, if I'm not mistaken. We played against them, but we ended up using Dallas later, like after Thanksgiving or prior. But we did not use them. Right. On week three. But we made a note. We got to remember this because they're so underpicked here. You almost have I mean, you almost have to take them if we're not if we're going to if we're going to fade them anyway, then you definitely um, you have to consider using them earlier. 
But this year, we didn't get to talk much about it, but right. we probably wouldn't have used Dallas this week. We would have entertained it, but because of the playability for 10, 11, and 13 as well, yeah. we probably yeah. would have laid off of them. Yeah. But I, I think Detroit's a really good pick for Circa. I, I, I just think that people are going to lay off the – the other games are Dallas hosting Washington, San Francisco at Seattle. That's a great one because you really don't want to take San Francisco. You want to say San Francisco for later in the season. Or, or, the, or people might burn them in four, and who knows. Correct. Yeah. So if you're never going to take San Francisco there, you have to look at your remaining options, and that's the Jets hoping my, uh, hosting Miami. Well, that, that situation changed yesterday. So it, it really only leaves two games that you're going to you know, feel really good about. And that would be Detroit hosting Green Bay and Dallas hosting Washington. So the, when that happens, it looks like two, two teams, as, as, as it currently stands, might really take a large share of the picks on Thanksgiving. I would rather just pick one of those teams now and then just pick it under and just, you know, I don't know, pick Seattle later. Um, I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll tell you. I'll tell you again. You you think about what 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 could be, like by the end by by the time it gets to Thanksgiving, San Francisco could be could be nine. You know what I mean? Like that's possible. Also, I mean Seattle might just uh, be- cor- correct. But if I'm never going to take San Francisco, right? Then I might can I really might consider just blowing uh, Detroit or Dallas now, because you know worst worst case scenario you're gonna you're gonna pick between two underdogs or you're gonna take or I mean. I would I would hate to be in a situation where I have to cave and take San Francisco there. I, I just don't think I would. But Detroit's going to be pretty underpicked, which means that the Giants should be overpicked in Circa. Yeah. Last year, we almost got knocked out a lot earlier, but I my, uh, we have we had three other guys give their input, and I let I I let it up to a vote, and they outvoted me, and we laid off on Jacksonville in in a week that it was very clear that Jacksonville was going to be very very chalky. Oh, I remember sure. that. And they were. And they I, were. I, 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 I bid on that one. I bid on that one. Oh, I didn't care. I wanted to do it anyway. It's like, you know, yeah. when are you going to take this team? And yeah. as the season played out, you weren't going to take them anyway. And yeah. I still don't feel dumb about it. They were like 20, 25% pick. They lost. Uh, we took Tampa Bay. They won. And, uh, you know, and we advanced because of, because of that. The EV was definitely better with what we took. But, you know, as it was, Tampa Bay would have been a nice uh, team to have later in the season uh but you know we, we were well they sucked for a while but they ended up being like the play for christmas which was a disaster for me uh with that comeback but i i think going one of the thanksgiving teams if you're going to go uh, one of the top favorites i like taking dallas if you're in circa because they're, they're going to be so massively underpicked that I mean, I just – that's if I, if I was forced to take one of them. I guess I would take Dallas because I don't mind taking a small dog on Thanksgiving and then I'll just save Detroit. But I just think you have to eat the chalk and circuit and take the Giants and just hope that because they played so horrible. I mean, yeah. they scored and zero Arizona, points Arizona, Arizona, on the road. Arizona was not that bad. I, 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 I think you should go for it. In a single-entry standard pool, the Giants is the runaway pick. I – you're just not going to need this team. And, and Detroit, especially if you're going to be saving, especially if you're going to be using some of these other teams or, you know, up front that coincide with Detroit's pick, uh, picking weeks, basically don't pick Detroit if you're going to use some of the other teams that are as favored in them in the weeks that you could take Detroit because then you're limiting your picking options. Okay, but so, I, I like I like both those teams a lot. So now 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 we get to now we get to how how you lose. Okay, not how you lose. Now we get to really how we lose. So what what if what if I wanted to be a wise and hybrid? Okay, and 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 not take Detroit, and 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 over project the Giants, meaning thinking they're going to be more popular than than I think they're going to be. What what if I wanted to punt with Denver or New Orleans? Would would that be would those two be the worst plays I've ever made, or would you give me permission to make them? Now, I ask that rhetorically because each time I think of of, of playing Denver, 
I think of this, I think, okay, they're only three and a half. They only have a 62% chance to win. So what am I gaining if they win? Right. Okay. You got to yeah. gain something. Right. So I'm thinking, well, I'm gaining the fact that no one's going to have them and that I'm probably not going to use them. And then I just scroll ahead to the stupid week 13, which is like sticking in my freaking craw, you know, because you got this Pittsburgh spot, which is going to yeah. be, be like you said earlier this, this, this week is going to be just owned through the roof. Um, and unless I'm willing to say Dallas, which I very well might be, you know what I mean? Um, then Denver is going to be that that other team. However, same analysis with Pittsburgh. If no one took Denver last week, nobody took them this week, then everybody's going to have them available in 13. Maybe mm-hmm. I don't even want to play them. So so, so the, I, I'm inclined to play more Denver than I'm supposed to. That's my, that's my take. The reason, the reason I like this thinking is – the worst thing that ever happens outside of, you know, them losing and the other teams Whatever. winning is I don't even know what the worst thing, I guess the worst thing is if no one takes the giants and then you're just pissed off at yourself, but you, you don't like if they end up being massively underpicked, but no, giants, I think there's giants are going to get blasted this week in circuit. <laughs> I, I, I agree, but look what happened last week. Right. Yeah. The, the chiefs, became an oh, they're already unplayable but they were like 10 percent ownership and they went down to three that seven percent went somewhere it all went right it almost all went to washington none of it went to minnesota i mean we got we got minnesota in a circuit like 10 or 11 percent yeah and that that was very very surprising we i mean we felt that minnesota was gonna i think jesse thought it was gonna be at least 20 percent. it was it was it was somehow half that because washington inherited all of the of the ownership so because of that i would feel pretty confident that no one else is going to do that. And it opens up your options for these teams that have a lot of pickable weeks by not taking, basically you're, you're fate, you're fading the giants. So you, you're hoping that they're picked at a high percentage, which right. is a good thing. I mean, I love the giants, but I also love this. Uh, I, I, I think I like what you're thinking more than any other option. So my favorite options are fading the giants or taking them uh, for, uh, for circa. Because at least you know it, everything hinges on one game. If you pick the Giants and they win, well, you didn't use those other teams you know you're going to need. And if you don't pick the Giants, you have a shot to knock out a nice chunk of the pool. And you're picking a team that you're not going to want to uh, use later anyway. And the reason I like Denver is after week 13, look at that schedule. When are you ever going to pick them after that? You don't need them. At the Chargers, at the Lions, New England, Chargers, at Las Vegas. It, it, it's not a team that you might accidentally need. I think it, Atlanta, I talked about last week, was a team that you could accidentally need at the end of the season, possibly, after you, especially in doubles where you, you, you have a lot less teams available. So I like that thinking a lot, especially for Circa. I wouldn't do that in a regular single entry pick pool. I'd probably just, I, I would go, stronger on the giants over the lions i would take lions and then i might sprinkle in you know that that third group but tampa bay's got to be a, a really good option too well, let's talk about that so i didn't think about tampa so what do you think about talk about new orleans and tampa then? i think new orleans uh, did i take new orleans last week i did not yeah. i oh, probably oh, didn't well, you do thought that. about it you thought about it right, right, right. i th- so there's a reason i didn't do that i didn't do it because I'm trying to look at the weeks. Okay, so I, I saw potential. They have a lot of potential. Four, six, eight, nine. I mean, these are these, these are against low low tier teams. Tampa at Houston, at Colts, Bears, and then Carolina in 14. So that's why I didn't take New Orleans, just hoping that I could you know pick them up on one of those weeks in the middle of the season as a six point favorite and save one of the, you know, the top tier teams, Dallas, Buffalo, San Francisco, Philly, Kansas city. So I would, between those teams, I would not take new Orleans because if you're going to, if you're going to use this strategy, you need to give yourself the option to use it again later by saving the teams that are most likely going to be exercised for this option. And Tampa Bay is just not really that team. Um, it, it just looks very bleak. I mean, of course, there's a couple that could be there, but 
New Orleans definitely is a better team than than it, uh, than Tampa Bay. Um, so I like Denver too. I I, I would I would choose between Denver and and uh, New Orleans. I prefer Denver though because again, how are you ever using Denver? Yeah, after week thirteen, especially yeah. It, even in, I'm telling, you, even including week thirteen. I mean, they're going to be a hundred percent available. Correct. And and they're going to be yeah because yeah because they lost they lost in week one so yeah they're, they're, that that's uh, no one else going to take them between now and then and and it's going to be a, like the pool is going to be literally forty five percent of the people are going to take Pitt and forty yeah. are going to take Denver you know what I mean who else are people to know everybody's going to burn Dallas probably at some point yeah and and that and that's why we, every week you should sort and, and look at this this is a great tool it allows you to visualize cross out. Cross out one team that's important and then go through each of the weeks and see what you have left available. And what you're going to notice when you flash across five different weeks where that team is a team that you'd like to have for there, you're going to notice one or probably two teams that keep popping up. And one of them's Jacksonville and one of them is Detroit. So when you see those same teams uh, keep flashing as available for that week, you got to be very careful about using those teams because if you use the, the team that you started with, whether it's Buffalo or Philly, once you use that other team, you're, you're going to have a lot less to choose from at, at those weeks that you were checking. And Jacksonville is one, Miami is another, and I think Detroit's the third that, that really popped, you know, popped into, popped out to me when I was flashing these weeks after eliminating some of the key teams. One you just point. you can't you can't go wrong saving certain teams for later. Yep. Uh, one, one one other thing I should mention about week four. Uh, we were talking about I was talking about New Orleans for a minute. New Orleans in week four could be pretty interesting in especially in circa because once again you you see this and again it's so important to just keep sorting and seeing what the what the what the what the quality of each week looks like. So you remember like let's look at this week for example when you listen this way you have four teams. At the top of whom uh, three of them are like are like Christmas slash Thanksgiving games. You look at Week Four, same thing. You got San Fran, Philly, and well, Dallas. It, it's the same exact teams too. Yeah, it's the same exact teams. So, so when you if, if you want to save those, you're eliminating those. Then you're down to literally, I mean, like two teams, like the Chargers and the Saints. So it'd be nice to have the Saints available as, 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 as a Correct. possibility there. So, um, um, but 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 also th- this reminds me last week when the three teams were 10 point favorites in week nine and we, and we dropped. And the reason we did that was because those teams were so valuable. Two of the, two of them played on Thanksgiving, Buffalo and Dallas and Philly was like a slam dunk pick the next three or four weeks. And if you use just one of them, you were automatically dropping in win percentage on a later week automatically. I'd rather drop on the win percentage up front, get it over with, because when you get to those latter weeks, that team, the, those teams will be far less owned and you will get, you will gain more EV than what, whatever you lost. And you could gain a ton. Like if you have Dallas in 13 in yeah. Circa, that's good. That's going to be a slam dunk. If you have the Niners in week 15, if you have the Eagles in 17, the, the, these are our games that. Yeah. Even though they're very far out, it, it's hard to imagine a scenario where you're going to be upset if you get there. Like, oh man, Arizona, you know, the Eagles are only a nine and a half point favorite. I mean, how, like, I'll tell you, how, I'll tell you something else, by the way. And this is, boy, this is this really overthinks it, but 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 I I think this is relevant. So last year was it last year or the year before. It was one year where we were deep enough where we started to really analyze other people's entries. Okay. I mean, we yeah. really get into it and like, okay, if we were this person, but whatever. And there were these, these entries out there that were really, really strong, meaning that they had stuff like Philly in 17, like available to them, you know, or, yeah. or whatever, these big hammer games, either they got lucky earlier, they took calculated risks earlier, whatever. They had those types of plays available in 17 and, and we didn't. Okay. So what happens is, is that even in week 12, you have to sort of respect the threat of, you know what I mean, of that, of yeah. having to go against them. 
and maybe take undue risk that maybe you otherwise wouldn't take because of the threat of, of having to go up against that. So even like if you can save Philly, like you're kind of laying the freaking hammer on people and say, OK, you know, you want to you want to try to chalk out until then. You know, I got Philly waiting for you to slam you. You know what I mean? So so it's a it's an interesting dynamic, especially when, when you're up against the sharper players who are actually looking at the Andrews. The, the strategy that we have to uh, look at this week, and this was similar last year when in that uh, pool with over 20,000 entries, one of one of my gambling friends had like 20, you know, it is like 20 entries left out of like 180. And I had I had three or four. I had the third right. most. And I was I was pissed because how am I going to beat him? Right. Right. Like, like, right. It, like how am I going to beat him? So what I started to do was I made my picks. I took some risks because if he has more entries than me, he, he has an inherent advantage over me. Right. I needed to do picks that I did not think he would do. Yeah. But when I was in the exact same situation as he was, which we were last year, we had one pool with like 23 entries left. We had three and we got to week like, it was before Thanksgiving. So it was like 11 or t- 11 or 10. We went like Philly, Buffalo, Dallas, one of each. It was, it wasn't week nine. It was the week after we didn't, we didn't want to drop the, I think it was the giants because we didn't need to. We, we had three entries out of 23. We just, we gave ourselves these strong teams for the middle of the season, and we decided to drop them. And I think one of them ended up losing. We ended up winning that pool anyway. But when you have a lot of entries, you can you can take some conservative shots. And, 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 and But you should protect against somebody trying to sneak back in. I have no choice. I have one entry left in a pool where some people have 10. Yeah. And I – I, what you've done is probably convinced me maybe we shouldn't even go. Maybe we should just get it over with and, and fade the Giants and the Lions and just go uh, Denver and just go New Orleans and Denver because at some point I'm going to need the upsets to happen. Yeah, I don't have a chance to win this thing until not necessarily getting level number of entries as everybody uh, other unique opponent, but if they have three and I have one, I can't beat them because they're unless I have a team that they don't have like those latter weeks we talked about having Philadelphia, having San Francisco, which could be the case. I need, I need to maneuver around them. So that, that we're going to take some heavy risks and, and maybe we will go Denver, New Orleans, uh, Denver. And uh, what was the other one? Tampa, you know, just, not, I'm going to say to get it over with, but what that means is not to give up and quit. It's to, well, you, what you're trying let's to try to, let's try to make, some, the, you're trying to try to make up, it the EV right now. Let's you're trying to pick up some equity. You're trying to pick up some equity. I mean, that's because yeah. well, well, uh, the giants and lions lose, that's going to be a double digit percentage combined. And then Tampa will be like less than 1%. Yeah. So I, I, that, that was helpful that you brought that up. Um, but this, I'll, I'll probably say it every week. If, if, if there's a close spot, Take the chance now. If, um, if you um, can have absolutely. San Francisco, Philly, if, if it becomes between your side between these teams, San Francisco, Philly, Dallas, and somebody else, take the somebody else. Just do it. You, you, there's no way you're going to regret it. But don't pick them the next week. That, that's like the wor- That's like the dumbest thing you can do. What do you mean? Don't, Say that again? Like, don't turn around and take them the, uh, next week, those three teams. Oh, right. <laughs> Just don't do it. That, I mean, that, that, it would be a complete waste. You're going to save actually, them. Save them. You, <laughs> you would lose EV because you'd be taking a, a smaller favorite this week to gain, like, I don't know, a percent next week where you, you could have just took Cleveland or, or Detroit or Cincinnati. You don't need to take those, you know, those teams next week. So if you're going to save them, save them medium and long. And the good part, these teams have multiple spots to place. So it's not like you're saving them for one spot and one spot only and hoping it works out. Dallas, 10 through 13. Philadelphia, 13, 14. No, Philadelphia, 16, 17. And San Francisco, 14, 15. You can't go wrong. I My prediction – is the winner out of uh, Circa or, or any big pool is going to drop these three teams. If enough people, you know, go that route, and as long as they don't have identical paths to get there, someone's going to someone's going to have those three, t- two of those three teams available, and they're going to have a very big advantage. Uh, week, 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 week nine is the death week now. So because week nine is going to have Cleveland with 800 percent ownership. 
Oh, and, we didn't even talk about what you got. Look at that. Um, and, no, and nobody over minus four. <laughs> no, that, I mean, that, that's where it gets interesting because I did say last week that if Washington was a 10-point favorite, I would just go all in and not even care. There were seven, and, I, and, and we completely laid off. Right. Uh, Cleveland can definitely get to that spot where yeah. – you just where the, where the separation just, is just so big that you just have to just eat. just fuck it. The only other decision you have is to take the decision away from yourself, and we have done this. Some, and by, sometimes and that's, it, well, that's what I was doing. That's why I was looking. I was looking at week um, what was it week three for a few minutes. Just you know, it is taking option. Cleveland next week. Yeah. Jesse and I have done that. We've taken a team yeah. because we knew it was going to be an agonizing decision, so we made the decision. That we couldn't reverse, right? Yeah, and you stay exactly. Cleveland next week, and then you just hope, and then you just hope it works out. Well, now I'm not tempted anymore, right? Exactly. It's, and but but what it does is it it opens up whatever team you did take, and and you could, you're probably not choosing between like Cleveland and Kansas City next week, but if you're choosing between like Cleveland and Detroit, well, Detroit has a lot of other spots that you could use them. So it could end up working out for you that you didn't use Detroit and you, and you wasted Cleveland because Detroit could somehow win it for you. Last year, uh, last, last point to make, it's not really a point. It's just what could happen on. There's this one week where my friend was down to a pool. He asked who he should take. And I said, you, you, you cannot take Minnesota. You have to have, you have to have Minnesota for later. And he took the other team, which was just as useless. But Minnesota had one spot where you'd like to have them. And that was the Chris, uh, week 16. And that was the pick that we took that won. And whoever he took lost. And Minnesota, by point spread, would have been a better team for him to have. He didn't do anything wrong. It's just that the problem is the team that he took had less viable options than Minnesota. And that's why I told him he should take the other team was because I, I, there's much better chance you'd like to have Minnesota later. So look at that too. When you're close between teams, it, it's worth looking at. You should, don't just blindly take New Orleans over Tampa Bay if you like them both. Look at their schedules like we that we looked out, and it's very clear. New Orleans has – probably five more spots that you'd like to use them in a vacuum than Tampa Bay. So take Tampa Bay now and save New Orleans and hope that that, that, that works out for you later. All right, everybody. Good luck in all your pools. I encourage everybody to post in the discord. You guys have been doing a great job with that so far. Um, and that'll do it. Good luck, everybody. See you next week. See you later, uh, Mike. Bye, Eric.